Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation. Well, it's kind of an interesting story. You see, this all started on a random Wednesday morning about a month ago, where one of my friends, whose name also happens to be Mike, gave me a ring and he said, hey, I'm putting together this country band. We need a side man as a guitarist just to play a couple gigs with us in a band where every single person's name is Mike. Would you be interested in that? And I cannot make this up. That was 100% what happened. And in the moment, I didn't really know what to think. I can count on one hand the amount of non-church live guitar gigs that I've done in the past two years, and I really wasn't prepared for it, especially when he said specifically all of the songs we were going to be playing were either classic rock or country. Now, in my lifetime, I've probably learned maybe three or four classic rock songs. They're all ACDC parts that I tried to learn for a specific audition that I failed. And tell me in the comments if you want that story. For a lot of people, you might be thinking to yourself, Mike, what's the big problem like it's just classic rock it's just country well i have a whole kind of backstory with this for the longest time specifically with country i thought it was the worst music on the planet this stuff was the literal bane of my existence i thought it was just that music that they listened to in the south they listened to in nashville like i'll never like it but then something interesting happened you see i discovered keith urban and i realized that some of these guys are some of the best players on the entire planet and then of course a couple months ago on the fourth of july in downtown nashville i got to see brad paisley play with joe bonamassa it was like hearing this new special thing for the first time and i went from not just saying okay country is good but i don't necessarily love love it to like telecasters are awesome country is awesome this brad paisley guy he's next level i don't know how many people can touch his playing ability even though i had discovered this newly found love for country music and specifically country guitar playing like i was saying before i really only knew three or four classic rock licks and i barely knew what chicken picking was but i thought this could be a really interesting challenge for me because one of the things that i've heard time and time again when you're in a rut which i have been in on guitar for quite a little bit one of the coolest things you can do to break out of that rut is to switch to a completely different style, like something you've never even thought of playing before. So I was like, what if I tried to get really deep into country? So first thing first, I looked up on YouTube, I found like three country licks and I was like, oh, I get this thing now. And on a very basic level, I finally kind of properly understood what chicken picking was. Now with gigs coming up, I knew it was important not just to put together the licks, but the actual sound that I'll be trying to culminate. And that's where the gear comes in, first of all, I've been using the SEDGT a lot at practice. I really like the tremolo bar for a little bit of the country stuff and for a little bit of the rhythm playing, but if I'm gonna be a real, real country player, I knew eventually I would have to pull out the telly. This guitar I've had for probably two and a half, three years now. It is my favorite guitar that I may have ever owned. But if you want that full story, the link is in the description. And the second big part of this entire thing, the actual pedals. And I had a couple of specific parameters that I had to meet with this. You see, there are a couple of things that I have listed under the category of first class necessity. The very first thing is I need it to be compact. I've stated it in the past that one of the things I used to covet is people with like pedal boards that were bigger than ever that had 30 different pedals. It's not what I necessarily want right now. And the second thing is versatility of sound. One of the things that I've been learning recently is that in terms of country, there are a lot of different sounds. There's pop country, there's country, there's bluegrass, there's the classic rock stuff that we'll be doing. There's all these sort of different genres coming into one, and I want the board, I want my sound to be able to do all of those things. And third thing, I want versatility in terms of the environments that I'll be taking these pedals in. I'm gonna be doing a lot of different styles of gigs. We're gonna be having a practice room where we do all our practice. We're gonna be having times where we're plugging directly into the soundboard, mixing ourselves. There are gonna be times when a different engineer is gonna be doing it for us because that's what kind of venue we're at. There are going to be a lot of differences and I want as few unnecessary variables as possible. And right as we get started, Universal Audio are the ones who are gonna be helping me out with this project. You can get all of the pedals that we're about to see at Sweetwater, the links are in the description. Make sure to check them out. And I think now I'm ready to say it might be go time. First things first, and this isn't even about country or any other style, I would still put this pedal first in every board I have ever and will ever do. D'Addario pedal tuner. Now, I've read from some people in recent days, because I always thought you put it absolutely first in the chain, that there are a lot of people that like to put it last as a kill switch. I like to put it first. I don't think that's gonna change for a while. Now we're gonna get to the real, real stuff that's gonna make this board country. For the longest time, I was under the impression that compression was just for the funk stuff, for the Corey Wong guys, for the Nile Rogers guys. 
But once I started playing country more and more, a lot of that snap from like chicken picking and for a lot of their telly style licks actually comes from the compressor. So Teletronics Universal Audio, it's modeled after an LA-2A, which is like a very, very famous compressor. And like I said, it's really about putting on some of that extra snap while weighing down some of the transients. <laughs> So here's where things get really quite interesting and very different from any other board that I've made before in my entire life because with every board that I've ever made, now comes the Tube Screamer, now comes the DS1, now comes the Distortion. But I've been thinking a little bit differently nowadays and I really like the classic thing of having just an amp and using just the distortion or the gain from the amp. And since I was talking before about how much versatility of circumstance, depending on where we're playing matters, I wanted an amp sim pedal that could do both of those things. And that's where, ladies and gentlemen, we have the UA Ruby. Now, I had heard of this pedal before because I had used the UAFX Dream 65, and I thought to myself, maybe I could run them in stereo and be the really cool guy, but that kind of conflicts with rule number one of robotics. I mean, rule number one of my pedal board, I'm not a robot, was I wanna keep this as simple as possible. Fender style amps were always my favorite amps of all time, but the more and more I started pairing the Tele sound with the sound of an AC30, I started to actually prefer that, especially for country. And like I was saying, when it comes to the actual distortion or the overdrive of everything, the Vox AC30 is always known for having the top boost. So what I do with this is I actually dial in the preset of having a more boosted amp, and then I can just turn up the boost or turn up the gain when I need to. Now, here's where we get to our post stamp effects, and this is where we're able to have a lot of fun, because this is where I can get a little bit weird. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna institute some chorus. Now, doing more research, I figured out that chorus isn't actually that weird for country, but for me, a person who spent most of my life actually hating the effect of chorus until I discovered a chorus pedal about six months ago, that's where we get the brigade, which is a vibrato and chorus. That's where our law of variation of tones that I wanted with putting together this board really comes in. I didn't just wanna be able to do the boosted thing and the clean thing, when it came to modulation, that was very, very important. And specifically when it came to other styles of country, there was one very specific both rhythm and clean pedal that I knew I would need that I only started using maybe a month ago. Don't know if I've ever really used it in a video. And that happens to be tremolo. And we have the flow tremolo pedal here. It's a vintage trem, and specifically more with the country stuff than with the classic rock stuff. A lot of the time during the verses of songs, I feel like it can be a really cool freck to just liven things up and to get the crowd to go, oh, that's different even without having to like go to some of the lead stuff. But this is also, I think, the effect in terms of modulation that I have the most to learn about because I've been using a tremolo arm for as long as I can remember. Even more recently, I've taken actually all of the whammy bars and the trems off of my guitars because I abused every single one of them. But I think not having a trem system on my telly and being able to dial this in more specifically will help me to hold back but still have the effect. Now we have one such player left for the evening. I know what you're thinking to yourself, Mike, are you going to choose reverb or delay, delay or reverb, reverb or delay? Well, 
I'm actually gonna go with both. One of the ideas in terms of fitting with our compactness law of robotics, I mean, building pedal boards, is the idea of having either a tray verb, like a tremolo and reverb, or a delay and reverb, and that's where this comes into effect, the del verb. This is where we start to dive into the different specific niches of country music, especially when it comes to the reverb. Most of the time, when it comes to delay, when I'm doing a lot of the country and classic rock stuff that I'm doing right now, I like to keep it pretty short, kind of like a slap back, nothing too special. But when it comes to the reverb, this is where it gets really interesting. For a lot of the more pop country stuff, I like to really use a hall reverb. And for a lot of the more classic country stuff, I like to use a spring or even a plate. And I've really had a renaissance with plate reverb more recently, like a very, big renaissance where I thought it was just for like vocals and snares, but putting it on guitar. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have our pedal board. And for the first time in a while, I feel like I have this new challenge with country music. It's like this new world is opening up. It's like all these new possibilities. Like I'm wondering if I'm going to start to change as a person or if something different or unique is gonna... No joke, I feel something weird happening right now. I don't know if I can contain it. I feel it. some new licks, I got some new styles, I got to break out of my rut, but at what cost? Look at me! Is this just it from now? 